They're fantastic. Okay, so um, Milo, I got a email from a friend of mine runs a glove company, and this glove company sends out like uh, they send out like uh, I'm on a, their mailing list, and on their mailing list they usually send out like whatever like the hot issue in golf is of the day, and it's usually like Tiger Woods is coming back, or it is um, you know. PGA Tour versus Live. What's your opinion? It's like something to try to like drive comments and get people fired up or whatever. And today I got an email that said, um, "Instructor Wars 2023. Whose side are you on?" It was it was so, like it was such a uh, it was a clickbaity thing. But I thought it, but I was like, I think I know what they're talking about. And then I then I looked in and it was it was this debate between you and another golf channel. So. Um, I'm not really, uh, because I usually almost all golf arguments are like straw man things where people are misrepresenting the ideas of somebody else. So I'm, I'm going to leave that to the other golf channel to, um, kind of, uh, present their point of view. And, uh, but I do want to, I do want to kind of put a clear point on what you're saying, because we've done videos. I was just showing before the stream started, I was showing a video that I think is really good. I think one of the best videos on the topic a Be Better Golf video that uh, from my first visit out to see see you. It's called something like Be a Bender or something. If you yeah. go to Milo, if you go to Milo Lines Be Better Golf, search Milo Lines Be Better Golf bends or bend uh, in YouTube, it'll come up, and it's like a 16-minute video. I think it's very good. So, um, so my goal is to just try to try to simplify this because I. I think it's something that's beyond uh, minutia. I think it is important. And it, it's also something that um, if people understand it, it can be like a real way to help golfers. Like I don't think it's a rabbit hole kind of like nightmare kind of thing to get involved in. I think it's, it is something that can help you if you, if you know kind of what you're doing. So um, what's, your, what's your general thoughts about it initially? About bending? Yeah, ge general general thoughts about bending. What well, first, first is like, what are we talking about with, what is bending, what is tilting, and and also because uh, I think one of the main issues, especially with the the level of golfers that are like be better golf and Milo lines people who are usually like good golfers that have been playing for a while and looking to break through. Like we're talking about like anywhere from like a from anything to like you know fifteen, seventeen handicaps, something like that. So. What are some okay. of these concepts? So bending, let's put my club down for a second. Bending is actually bending your thoracic spine. So this would be a leftward bend. So you can see my spine is actually curved. And this would be a rightward bend, left bend, right bend. And when I do that, the center of my rib cage actually moves forward in either of those directions. Okay. So that would be a bend. A tilt would be this. Okay. So, so like when you bend, Dana Dahlquist showed this to me, like when you bend, like the difference, the distance between your armpit and your like hip pointer is getting smaller, right? Yeah. So this side is, is getting smaller and this side is expanding. Okay. So that would be a bend and my head can stay right in the middle and I can bend Sure. and I can bend the other way. So that's bending. Mm -hmm. When you, t when you, side bend or tilt it's coming from the lumbar spine it's coming from way lower and it moves my head well off of center mm -hmm. so that's the difference in the two okay so that's the difference in the two so how how is bending used by good golfers and i think a lot of the great golfers how is bending used as a uh solution to the problem of like the plane especially like getting back onto the impact plane well all really good golfers bend in transition so as i wind up there's my spine's either fairly neutral or some amount leftward bent okay so some amount leftward bent mm -hmm. now as as a player transitions if they don't create any bend in their thoracic spine then everything is going to go out. So they have to go into a rightward bend. So you can see clearly if I turn around this way, when I do this, 
you can see clearly my, my rib cage is bent. I've got a real nice crease right here in, in my fat fold that I wish I didn't have. Right. So that would be a, a right bend in my thoracic spine. And that helps the player, if you watch that from down the line, as I go into a right bend, you can see how that lowered the golf club down onto a nice hitting plane. And it also got my center of pressure forward because when you right bend, again, your, your center of your sternum actually moves forward, which shifts pressure to the left foot. All right. Do you have like a shaft holder back there? What's a shaft holder? You know, like, oh, you know, like, like something if, that if can, you, if you stuck a I, shaft in the ground, I don't have anything here in the backyard. Okay. All right. So the something that is like, for me, as a person, kind of like a golf journalist or something, uh, the way there's a couple of different questions that I have that kind of reveal to me the style of teacher that, that I am talking to. So for me, what I really want to know is that in the backswing, the right, so, so make your backswing very slow, Milo. Down the line? Yeah, just like you are. Okay. So in the backswing, I think one of the main differences when you're at the top of the backswing that you weren't at the at address is that your right arm is bending, right? Right arm is folding some amount. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So when your right arm folds, you are above where you need to be by the time you get back down to like what's called the functional swing plane. So show people yeah, you... what the functional swing plane is and then how you're above it at the top. So this would be about the functional plane where I can just deliver the golf club into the ball. And here my arms are elevated up above it. Okay. So what, so my question to teachers always is, and I've gone through this, this is actually what Milo was texting me when I was doing a lot of uh, arms first stuff. And I was doing a lot of back to back to the target, drop the arms, you know, uh, kind of drills or other things like that to try not to be over the top. And I would, so I would ask Milo the way I ask all instructors, I said, Hey, I'm above where I need to be. I'm above the plane. So I got to do something to get back down. Uh, now I know it's not back down, but, but to get down to, uh, the functional swing plane, I'm way above it when I'm here. So if I'll, all I do from the top is rotate, I'm going to be cooked. I'm going to be steep and over the top and healing it or pulling the hell out of it so, yeah, so what's your solution to especially if you if because i know you don't like like accelerating the arms what's your solution to getting back down on the functional swing plane well there's a couple of things that are going to happen i'm going to have some pelvic tilt so i'm going to i'm going to flex in my pelvis so hip flexion so I'm, there's going to be some hip flexion oh, before you do this milo um how much lower do you think the hands have to go like your left arm is across the chest, like at the top. Um, I don't know. How so much, how much let's just see. Let's think the hands have to go. Let's see. So a good impact for a tour player would look something like this. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, if I left that intact and I rewind it up to the top of my swing, they've got to go from here to there. What's up? Yeah, the door's unlocked, but I can't talk. I just had to uh, get... That's uh, all right. You got the kiddo, so I yeah, got I it. Yeah, I had to get Arrow's astronaut helmet. So, Okay. Um, so did you see that? No, show, show, it, show it to me again. So, so, so I'm saying at the top, how much further down do you have to go? Like, So, so a good impact for a tour pro would look like this. Mm -hmm. So if I wind this back up to the top without changing anything in my arm structure, my arms have got to go this much. Okay. Yeah. So not very much. Mm -hmm. so all right so uh, how do you get the the arms to drop down that much well momentum does most of it for you so in transition as i'm winding up i'm winding the system up yeah and as the club and my arms are finishing their wind up my body is going to reflex so i'm going to flex down my pelvis is going to start to unwind and that's going to create a nice big stretch across my arms and energize them because there's energy in that. And then my arms are just going to naturally slingshot out of that. So 
all the energy that's input just gets spit out. Mm -hmm. But so, I don't have to. So you're doing a couple things in order to. So you're here. Your your arms we know have to go. You're saying from about here to about there, which is about yeah. eight inches maybe. And so you're saying in order to do that, you are one uh, gaining a little flexion. You're actually getting lower. Your butt's going backwards. You're getting a little lower. Yeah, almost everybody who's really good, that's what's happening. They're getting their pelvis is lowering for the first little bit of the transition, which is energizing their arms mm -hmm. without them actually energizing their arms. Right. So, yeah. so that, that gives, that gives you of this much you have to make up. So that gives you like two inches. What, what were some of the other things you do to get back down to where you need to be? Right bend. So I flex right bend. That right bending is going to yeah. bring my hands down where they basically need to be. Now the rest of it is just the energy in my arms. Mm -hmm. My, my arms are going to kind of slingshot out of all that, that unwind. Now is an important part of getting back down to that plane, a little bit of uh, left arm abduction where it's going more across your chest. Yeah. In transition, almost everybody is going to have a little bit of left arm abduction. So the, the, the arm is actually going across and up still, yeah. at least in almost all the graphs I see. So the, uh, so the, this is something we'll have to talk about later as far as like, what is the top of the backswing or whatever, um, and, beyond and I wouldn't, just the hands I wouldn't necessarily, high. I wouldn't necessarily say this is super important for getting the club back down on the plane. I would say what it is super important for is getting energy. Yeah, preloading like that sling that you pre like. preloading so that you can energize that your arms and get them moving fast. So of this whole, um, so of these things that you need to get back down to the plane where you can really start completely attacking the ball uh, with no fear, like you don't have to hold on or drop down or do anything. The the bending of your body is not an inconsequential thing. No, it's, you have to do it. It's very, if you important. don't, yeah, yeah. You, everybody does it. So would you, you have say, to do it. so would you say everybody good anyway? So would you say that if you don't bend, like, let's say you're, you're a golfer and you're at the top and you, you just do not bend. Then at that point, your only solution really would be to throw the arms down behind you. Oh yeah. So if I'm not bending, so show me what a golfer who doesn't bend would have to do. Cause there you're just straight over the top. They'd have to do this. Yeah. Get their arms. Their arms would have to drop. Can you hit one like that? Sure. Okay, now hit one like you do. <laughs> okay. And I don't think it's like I don't think it's like a ridiculous pantomime. Even the one that you did, I don't think that that's like some kind of a clownish style swing or whatever i mean that's really a solution that you see some golfers using i see it every single day on the range they get people show very yeah they get very frozen and slidey in the hips and then they they physically throw the arms down from the top literally every day somebody shows up to take a lesson from me who's doing this every day yeah so um all right so what, one of the things that I've heard people say, because I've gone through like the comments and stuff, is that this bending that you do. So show me that, that face on just like with your ribs, how you're bending. Okay. It looks kind of funny yeah. when you're, you know, like this, Milo, you're tilting. No, you're just tilting your ribs like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that a couple of times. So some things that people have claimed is that this side bend thing is just a personal feeling that you have. But it's not something the good players do, and it's also like a feel and not a real. And if it, if people ever actually really did this, they would be like way stuck and out of uh, way stuck no. and out of order. The, st the the side bending that would make them stuck would be this side bend. If they did this, they would be stuck, and that would be a way to shallow the golf club. But that would be a way to have no power, no dynamics in your motion. And you wouldn't be able to control the low point. You'd hit lots of flip hooks, fat spins, all kinds of problems. Yeah, did you the bending see... I'm talking about is a totally different bending. Right. Yep. Did you see uh, – you probably didn't because you were working. But did you see uh, Jason Day, what he said after his round today at the Waste Management? I did not. 
Yeah, he said that with his back problems, he said that uh, he said the way that I'm moving to shallow the club with my back and transition uh, sometimes gets incorrect, and that'll really hurt my back. And I think he's he's talking. I don't know uh, yeah. well, who he works with, but he works with Chris Como, and I know exactly they're trying to get rid of the pelvis rising and tilting back this way. Yeah, that's exactly. how he hurts. That's what he talked about. Lumbar like, spine. When I shallow the club with my body the wrong way, it hurts my back. Is what he said. Exactly. So if you're if you're if you're pelvis is going this way and you're going into a right bend like this you're going to get hurt especially at that kind of speed but what the guys who are the best do they're using this kind of a bend so they're wound up here as their pelvis unwinds they're in this bend and that's what gets this club to not go so if i don't bend the club shoots out mm -hmm. if i bend correctly you can see that club sh comes right into the slot how it should Okay, one thing I wanted to ask you about was that um, with this bending, I've had, I found successes and pitfalls of both methods because when I first started talking to you, I was doing the other method uh, aggressively and I had some success with it, but then that feel sure. of arms dropping from the top, accelerating from the top, had, had uh, I was told that it, it wasn't, it was really impossible to get them actually to do that. But that feel would, would started to actually get real. I was able to accomplish that. And I see it happen. I see it happen every day on with students. So yeah, a lot of people actually get their arms coming down. Yeah, you hear that so your body's going to react before that happens, so you don't have to worry about it. But maybe if you're a good athlete, it might. Yeah, yeah, that's what. I've heard. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard too. With some guys that are like really, you know, their body knows that's going to happen, so it really starts gearing up for it. So I had that, and then also in a similar way, now that I've, I'm trying to swing differently, is I found it really difficult to um, bend properly in the swing when I'm trying to hit a golf ball. If I'm doing certain things, like uh, I think something that everybody should do, because it's something that I did that kind of uh, keyed me in on this, is just get like a broomstick or something without a golf face, but like a stick. And then get a cardboard box or, a, yeah, not even that Milo, but like if that stick was half the length or you just hold it at the end. And if you smash something low on it, even holding it and just smash something and like kind of took a step and just smash something, not even split grip or whatever, and, and film yourself doing it, like getting angry. I, I did this with uh, pinatas. If you yep. watch videos online of normal people hitting pinatas, kids and adults and, you know, guys goofing around or people hitting uh, sledgehammers to a low wall or people hitting like uh, chalk chopping a cactus to make tequila or whatever uh, you see you see this stuff happening and you certainly don't see them leaving their back to the target and and dropping the hands so that kind of convinced me that if I want to be want to do like it, it feels good to like get up and just completely smash something and uh, and it doesn't feel good to kind of like uh, wait and wait and wait and wait and then kind of like wait for it to plane and then swing what are your thoughts on that as far as like i know that you 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 say swing like an athlete and uh you have your baseball bat there so kind of what convinced you that this bending way is the way to go my swing. say it again my golf swing okay i'm i'm pretty I'm pretty good at hitting a golf ball, relatively speaking. And I got really good really fast. You know, I went from never having played the game to being a college player in a year. Yeah. So, you know, didn't have to learn a lot. And then just studying and watching what the, the best players are doing. Um, you know, I've spent hours and hours and hours looking at footage of golf swings and studying 3D so, you know, once you, once you see it, you, you know, that's what, that's what the best are doing. All right. So, um, okay. So something I wanted to talk about, this is something that we talked about a long time ago. So when I was first talking to Milo and I was asking him all this stuff, uh, a big revelation for me, and then not even beyond when I was talking to Milo, but when I really started talking to Dr. Kwan, you started thinking about like, what what the, what the nature of a backswing is and what the nature of a downswing is so to you milo 
really when does the backswing when is the 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 backswing kind of over and then the process of the downswing starting it's a good question so for me because I, the reason i ask is because when we see gears data and other data and and we i've seen in the gears data people like john rom who are some of the most athletic swingers I've seen that the arms accelerate fast from the top, the top being where his hands are highest to uh -huh. like, uh, let's say when his, his arms get to like, uh, just past his armpit. So his, yeah, his arms are accelerating fast from well, the top. The arms accelerate fast, but they accelerate fast because of the dynamics of the change of direction. And then they spring out. So they don't, they don't immediately accelerate fast. My, my, my uh, hand speed is is pretty darn fast on gears, faster than almost everybody's. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not trying to get my hands to move fast out of the top. I'm trying to get them to move fast with my dynamics. So, for me, the the transition phase of the golf swing kind of starts somewhere around here, left arm parallel, depending on the club I'm swinging. I'm starting to transition my pressures, my momentum, back toward my lead side. So, so do that again. By, at what point does it start to transition? It starts to transition, depending on the club I'm hitting, between shaft parallel and left arm parallel. Okay. So then, because I've heard that from Drew Cooper and from, uh, from Dr. Kwan and other people as well. So then if that is when the process of your downswing really starts because there's a lot of force in the backswing and something has to break the momentum right so then by yeah. the time your hands are at the top what has already happened i've already like, started to i've already shifted pressure started to fall started to unwind okay and then so, the, then my hands reach the top and start on down start down yeah so when we're seeing the hands go really fast from the top is it um, and there's muscle activation stuff about this that is, I think, really valuable to look at. But is it like that somebody is accelerating the hands from the top as they spin their body? Or, or kind of what, what do you think is actually going on there? Well, I, I think it requires quite a lot of muscle to slow down the system that's working itself up. Mm -hmm. So the club and arms are working up and my body's changing directions. My body's actually falling down and left as the club and my arms are going up and back, which there's a lot of inertia there. So that my arms don't want to come with yet. Right. So it requires me to, you know, I have to use some muscular effort to change the direction of the, of the system. Okay. So, but um, so do, because so, there's some questions in the chat right now. And I think is it like something very simple could clear this up. Um, so do that thing once again, the, that bending move that you do when you, when you touch your ribs and you do this. You're right. So I noticed that like when you were talking about this, this bending stuff recently in your most recent video, you were using stuff from Dr. Mark Bull. And, this, oh, yeah. and I've seen stuff from uh, Quincis, which is a, a machine. I think it's something like that, that Dr. Kwan has, which is like, uh, it's like 128 sensors rather than... Uh, 24 or whatever. How many sensors is gears? I don't know. Depend. Gears can do, they can do more or less. I don't know exactly how yeah. many. So people are saying that, um, that in gears, it shows that the, the right rib cage bend does not do what you're saying it does. And so that what not, does, what does, that is not true. Okay. So, okay. So what, what is, you were talking so, in some of your stuff about the limitation of what gears is showing or not as far as in the avatar. Yeah, we were actually having a – Henry was having a conversation with Michael Neff, and there is the capability – Who's Michael Neff? The, he is the uh, president of Gears, so he's the, oh, okay. the head man at Gears. Yeah. Um, and there is the capability to see the, the frame of the spine. There is not currently – that I know of, Michael might be able to shed some light on it – a way to measure how much the rib cage bends – but you can see that the rib cage is bending almost the identical amount that it's flexing. So the amount that the in your transition, you're in a left bend and a in a extension. So yep. extension. Turn behind now, us a little bit. 
So, yeah, put your butt to the camera and do that. Butt to the camera? Yeah, right. So I'm in left bend and extension. Okay. okay? Mm-hmm. Now, as I change directions, I fall. My thoracic spine goes into flexion and right bend, so I stay centered. If it doesn't right bend, I won't stay centered. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the issue I see is that according to the side bend numbers that people like to quote, you're still in, in this position, in this point in time, I'm actually gaining in left side bend when you can see clearly that my spine is bending to the right. So that looks weird. I I will say that that looks very weird. What you like that position that you're in there. Yeah. You see the pictures I posted of DJ in that position. I've seen it. Yeah. uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Everybody's there. Everybody's rib cage is bending like that. It's just, it, it's what has to happen. Cause if I don't do that, if I stay in left bend and go into forward flexion, my head's going to go over here. So I've got to match it out with some right bend to center me back up. Okay. Do so that move again. I just so, want to watch that. So if I'm in left bend yeah. and I start to unwind and I stay in left bend and now in order for me to, st- to get my head back on center, I've got to add in some right bend. So now I'm in the middle again. Oh, okay, okay. So if you do it independently of, if you move the hips like that and you don't bend, then yeah, it looks you're, really weird. You're, yeah, you'll be right. way off center. So it's physically, it's impossible to make a good swing where the, where the head looks like it's not wandering around a lot if the, if the body's not bending and the thoracic spine's okay. not bending. Right. Okay, so one thing that um, I wanted to ask you, because like I was saying, I had difficulty with the, like an arms driven downswing. I have had difficulty as well with um, like being more bendy and using the bends to uh, shallow my swing and get Mm -hmm. me down on the functional swing plane. And something in your last video that I heard that I think was like really interesting was you said that when a player in transition adds flexion, that takes care of a lot of the bending that you need to do. Is that right? Yeah. Explain. So when I'm, so when I'm adding flexion, this direction at the same time that my hips are turning. So if my pelvis is turning and I'm adding flexion in my spine, see what that's creating here. Yeah. It's creating a a right side bend automatic. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to, to think about it that much. As long as my, as long as I don't let my head wander around, I'm going to create that right bend. Okay, so what about if you tried to bend, but you didn't create flexion? What well, would that look like? If, like, let's say, let's say you don't create flexion and you kind of slide the hips. Well, like most well, people you, do. Like most people do? Yeah. So if I don't create flexion and I slide the hips, I'm going to look like this. Yeah, so that's kind of what Jason Day talks about as far as he's bending a little bit, but he's bending the wrong way. He's bending in the lumbar spine, not in the thoracic spine. Yeah, if you guys watch the uh, the weights management open, uh, catch that. It was just a small. It's funny because these players don't really like to get too technical with Amanda or whoever's interviewing them afterwards. But there's just no other way for him to really explain it. So sometimes, every once in a while, they'll drop these little nuggets, and uh, they're they're really interesting. Yeah, Patrick is one of the the uh, best people about it. And Patrick is an interesting one because I met, I played with Patrick and when I met him and uh, right, it was like two years after he won his last major, he was very much a uh, keep the back to the target and drop, drop the arms guy. Uh, Yeah. And then Patrick um, saw George Gankus and he saw a bunch of other people. And I was shocked to see him in that bar talking about, you know, he, his mind was blown talking to George and some other people about like, you're saying I should do this and that. And then now he's, uh, you know, um, he's probably maybe the number two or number one champions tour player with a very different move. And he's faster now than he ever was when he was young. Yeah. He's so at he's, like 180, what, like his hardest of the year, like 183 or something. Yeah. He, he's going over 180 ball speed, which is that's yeah. really rare for a guy in their 50, 51 or something. It's, it's, yeah. and, uh, and, He's not hurting himself, which I don't, which, uh, so talk about that a little bit. Cause there, there will be people to say that, oh, well, the reason I do this, uh, this way or that way is it's safer is, is bending like this dangerous? Bending like this, no, it's actually the safer way to move if you do it right. 
if you do, if you try to bend and you go like this, then you better just swat at it with your hands and arms. And you'll, that'll be better. <laughs> but if, if you have the mobility in your thoracic spine, then bending like this is actually safe because it actually gives you less side bend numbers at impact down here where we want to have our side bend matched up to our rotation more or less and i prefer to see more rotation than side bend but so if i'm more lateral and sliding i'm going to wind up with less rotation and more side bend numbers and which is harder on your back side bend numbers where, where you get side bend numbers from so if you're looking at like gears data or any 3d motion 3d capture what they're measuring is the the actual tilt the bend here and so we want to make sure that that never exceeds the amount of rotation. Oh, so there's a there's a function or there's a little line item on gears that will tell you side bend. Yeah, they'll tell you side bend. They can't measure. But well, it's really you're saying it's really side tilt and not side bend. Exactly, and it doesn't. It, Show me the difference real quick. I just want to make this super clear. So side tilt, side bend. Okay. So if I did this, gears would would say I was in neutral it would say this is neutral neutral so when i but it would there there's a way to read it i i, I know that there is because i've seen the markers they can actually see the bending of the spine but i don't know there's not a number that signifies those that all right but so, you can you can see the bend so one of our friends luke uh luke bracky is saying that a lot of the um confusion and reason that this discussion is even happening is because there is a line item in gears that says side bend but the better term would be something about like kind of like thoracic bend or rib cage angle or something like that because we really are talking about two different things when you're talking about side bend side tilt and like t-spine like t-spine yeah. angle or something like that yeah and, and yeah and that's something that i'm going to address with with michael neff we're going to talk about it and see if we can figure out a way that we can denote what's actually happening bend wise because I've gone through and looked at the numbers and the, the, the front bend almost looks exactly the same amount of bend as, as the right bend in the, in the actual spine, but there's no number to show you how much right bend there is okay. in, the, in the thoracic spine. So if people want to look this up for themselves and like look at golf swing videos to start seeing uh, the bends of great players. Follow Luke Bracky. Oh, yeah. yeah he's, <laughs> he's on, a, he's on a Instagram. But no, uh, like what angle do you think shows it the best? Like if we're like scrubbing through YouTube looking. If you could find aerial, aerial is really good. Uh, rear view that's slightly off to the, you know, away from the target, kind of over there. Yeah, like it's really good. Seven o'clock or seven, uh, eight o'clock position. Yeah. yeah. Also, you can see them pretty good from. Like if I'm hitting that back at you and the camera was right over here, you can see the bends. So yeah. anything that's looking at it from behind, you can really see. Aerial is really good, though. If you can get a nice aerial view, you can see it real clear. Okay. All right. So something that I wanted to bring up because this is uh, something somebody else said. So then there's a list of all these anecdotes that, that people who don't, who don't like uh, – because the conversation kind of starts off with bends, but it, but it seems like the underlying conversation is really what you should do from the top of the swing, you know. So um, so and a lot of people. The, the issue we run into is there's good players that do all of it. There's good. Uh -huh. There are there are Hall of Famers who hit it with an arms golf swing like that. There like are the, like the body follows the arms. Yeah, there there's guys who do that, but there's. But then, Morgan. like, we hear a lot of people, we hear a lot of Hall of Famers and great golfers, like, um, there was a, a period of time when Tiger Woods was was going to the top, stopping, throwing the arms down, then following the body. That's that famous um, Tiger Woods and Butch Harmon video number two. Yeah, but he never did that, actually. He did that as a drill, but he never actually... So he did, during the, that, did that as during a that correction era. for overdoing something else? Yeah, because he was, he was extending too early. He wasn't getting into flexion so that him coming to a stop would make him have to flex to be able to get the system going right so then so then and also we hear like uh bobby lopez used to do this with me because um his swing philosophy and he would always say like okay uh davis love felt like he was 
um, pounding a stake into the ground. Sergio felt like he was ringing a bell. Nicholas felt like the hands would get to the club before the buttons on his shirt. Um, or the club head would get to the ball before the buttons. Like all these different anecdotes that these great golf and and then but then if you look at these guys in slow motion you see this beautiful ground up sequence like these aren't even like so much like drop the hands slidey guys so yeah but we're talking about like elite athletes who yeah. their pivots are trained to move really good so what do they feel in their hands and arms you know that's that's individual okay okay all right so as far as individual i want people to give people some some tools and skills to be able to judge for themselves so if somebody wants to film their swing, right, and try to come to like an objective conclusion to themselves, okay, am I bending or am I tilting and sliding? Like give us kind of how people should film their swing and look at it to be able to see like, it might be like, okay, look where your belt buckle is going, look where this is going, or what do you think? So I like to film from all different angles, first of all. And then when you're watching your golf swing, Pay attention to what your, your belt is doing in the transition So if you're, and where your rear is going. So if your rear end is going back and your belt's coming down and your chest is coming down as you're starting to unwind, then you're, you're getting into flexion and you're bending. Mm. If, you're, if you see immediately your right side shooting up and out, then you are doing the opposite and you're going to be tilting and you're probably going to get hurt. So Milo, if you look at like, uh, like some of the, the longest players and like the, the most consistent hitters right now, how many of them percentage wise will have some kind of flexion before they start, uh, bringing the hands down? All of them. Like a hundred percent? A hundred percent. So show me what they're, what, what 100% of these players are doing again. Sorry for all the repetition. I, I wanted to get it exactly so right. They're falling some amount. Mm -hmm. So they're adding a little hip hinge and they're falling yeah. into their legs. Yeah. Their chest is coming down. So not, all not, not, not all of them necessarily get you like, you know how they talk about the, how important the tush line is. So yeah. not all of them really get back or beyond that tush line. Not or all do them. they? I'd say almost all of them begin there and then some of them have a little bit more lateral motion and slide and the, and a little more extension you know that's that's definitely a pattern we see but all of them get more bent over yeah all of them it, as they're getting ready to to bring the golf club to change directions with the golf club they are going to fall some amount into the ground that's the only way you get enough pressure into the ground to hit it hard Okay, so we gave people a really good skill to, as far as to, to film themselves and look and see if you're doing that little move that Milo says 100% of uh, great hitters do. Now, Milo, if people like see that they are, basically they're at the top and then it looks like uh, something else, Bob, Bobby has a lot of great sayings. He says it looks like they get kicked in the pants before they, they make their downswing and they get a little taller actually. Yeah, exactly. So it looks like somebody's coming and kicking you right in the pants. Um, so if they see that, what's like a good way to start building? Like, I'm not even talking about like necessarily bending like as much as you are, but like starting to get that flexion that might put you in a position to actually bend the correct way. I'd say the first thing you need to do is, is address how they're winding the system up. So they need to feel like they are elongating the trail side so that they have somewhere to fall into. Because a lot of times I see people doing these kind of things because they've loaded up incorrectly. If they can learn how to load the system up, stretch the trail side out a little bit, now it's really easy to start to flex and fall, and it'll be pretty natural. Say that one more time. Somebody wrote a message. I just had to write that. <laughs> Sorry. So I think first thing they need to do is, uh -huh. is work on elongating the trail side, Okay. Stre stretching out the trail side so that they get into a little bit of left bend, and then that way they can start to learn how to bounce. And I would have them start with some little small shots, slow, stretch it out, fall and hit it. Yeah, it's amazing, that way, Milo, that you showed me early on how many people are actually in the opposite bends at the top. So show me what that would look like, what the opposite bends would be. Yeah, so their, their lead side is stretched and their right side is crunched. Every day it shows up on my tee. 
somebody's got this crunched and this stretched out, and they have a hard time seeing that ball down there. Can you even so they, do that and be bent over? Yeah, you have to stick your butt out a lot, and then naturally, this is pulling muscles yeah. in my body. You see so little kids do that sometimes, yeah. Do that. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Uh, Brendan, you meta- mentioned video our swing. In addition to video, we are. A f- are you a fan of Swing Profile to watch practice in real time? I thought I saw you using it recently. Yeah, Swing Profile is actually a partner in Be Better Golf, kind of. I know Zeke, the inventor of Swing Profile, and I work with him. Uh, I've A couple of the features on the app I've come up with, like the little star that you, you hit, because like if it's a swing that you liked, because I was going through all the swings, and it just puts up like 150 swings from your entire range session. You don't know which ones are the good ones or which ones. So I put up, I did that star thing. It's my big contribution to the app. And uh, I didn't put it up. I just told Zeke to do it. And uh, yeah, I work closely with him. And he's, he's got a lot of new cool stuff coming out with that. And um, I think somewhere in the archives of Be Better Golf, there might be a discount for people on Swing Profile. But I'm not sure. But uh He's, he always wants me to make videos about Swing Profile, but um, I only do it sometimes. But I use it basically every time I practice. Uh, so that was a really interesting question. All right. Uh, okay, Milo. I think uh, – final thoughts. I don't think – I think you, you got out what you wanted to say. I think the main thing uh, is when the rubber comes meets the road to this thing is that – um, you have just a very different solution to that kind of age old question of, of golf of, okay, how are you going to get the club back down to the impact plane? Yeah. And maybe a different definition of what bending is. Yeah. Right. So I think that there, that's part of the confusion is when they look at the, the data that's out there, they say we're not in right bend until sometime way down in here. Mm-hmm. When our pelvis begins to extend, that's when we really see the right bend numbers showing up. And I actually think that the right bend is something we're bouncing into, and I can show it. So, Okay, I, I hadn't heard that before. They think right bend is something that happens, like, really, really late. Well, it doesn't start happening until – in gears – so I posted a picture of Dustin Johnson at just after P, P5, yeah. and I went back and referenced it in gears – He's got his spine looks like it's a banana. It's really bent like this. Mm-hmm. And the gears data says he's still in left bend. This is a great question from Isidro because I think it exposes a lot of the um, things that are confusing people. He says, how can someone who wants to have side bend not feel stuck? I think a lot of people are saying, hey, if you're telling people to do side bend, eventually they're going to actually do it and be stuck, but it's not that, or is it? No. If you're side bending correctly, it's the solution to stuck. Stuck is always pelvis extending and moving forward. Now you're stuck. Okay. If you, if your pelvis is moving down and your tailbone is turning back behind you and you're actually going into, into side bend, you will never get stuck. It won't happen. Another good question from Greg N says, could thoracic bend, which I think is, uh, I think Greg just came up with a, with a better term right there. I like that. Could thoracic bend not be an illusion? For example, if the spine twists like a towel in addition to f- thoracic flexion, so bending being this and that and flexion being bent over. And he's uh-huh. saying, you know, the and- spine is an S-curved weird thing. Mm-hmm. So he's saying, is it just an illusion or is it something different? No, it's bending. Okay. The side is bending. All right. I think I can't think about. Yeah. So, um, okay, great. I I think that I think you did a great job with that. And um, yeah. So as far as like people not getting into like a rabbit hole with this, do you think like really the if you're first getting into this, should you um, think more about your hip hinge more or what do you think yeah. is kind of the I think first step towards first step some, is hip hinge sorry if first, you, yeah so somebody is kind step, of like the kicked in the pants slider learn how to create hip hinge mm-hmm. and naturally as you create hip hinge and let your chest kind of get on top of the golf ball you will be in right side bend it's just going to naturally happen right 
And this is a, it's a very interesting question. Uh, Milo and I did a school with Dr. Kwan. Somebody's asking, why is it that Dr. Kwan never speaks to swallowing the club? He, I think he meant to say shallowing the club. But uh, why is it that Dr. Kwan never speaks to shallowing the club? Uh, and my answer to that from having spent so much time is Dr. Kwan really doesn't see, because he's done so much stuff with the plane, he doesn't really see it in the way that a lot of golfers see it as far as um, there being a plane that you have to get back down to. Uh, he, he thinks of it more of like a big, a big circle. And, uh, he thinks that if it is ground up and centered in a certain way, then the shallowing will, will just happen. He, like he, he'll, like, if you ask Dr. Kwan that, ha that question, he, he'll, he'll just tell you, don't worry about it. And, and you'll be like, well, it's important. And he'll be like, no, just do the step drills and don't worry about it and walk away from you. So that, what do you think about that? As far as from having spent time, what do you think Dr. Kwan would say about that and this in general? I think he would say, don't worry about it. Yeah. And this, I don't know. I don't know. This is something that, you know, there's, there's a, a pretty good group of us who, who have seen this and who are, who are teaching this stuff. And yeah, our students get better really fast. So I'll just say that. Okay, Milo has a great website called MiloLinesGolf.com, and if you use the promo code BeBetterMilo, you can get a discount on becoming a member there. Uh, Milo and I have done uh, a lot of golf schools together, and we'll do some more in the future. And also, uh, so uh, that disclaimer out there, because we, we, we do work together. But uh, somebody's saying, somebody that's on your website, Milo, is, is saying what stage drills, so the referencing kind of the Milo system, uh, should they concentrate on doing to help with hip hinge and especially somebody who has, who wants to work on hip hinge and they have an outside in path. Foundation two. Okay. So show us foundation two with the concentration on hip hinge. So foundation two, you can't do it without hip hinge. Cause what we're doing is we're teaching the player to turn load. And now I've got to hit the ball without ever moving my arms. So I'm going to have to hip hinge and turn and so it's just going to be a little shot like that show me what it would look like if you if you did the turn load and just hit it with your arms yeah your your body never moves i shanked it yeah okay okay uh doesn't Okay, doesn't adding hip hinge with the shoulders further rotated than the hips put you into that right bend? I don't, I don't get – maybe you understand that question more than I do. Yeah, so if I'm What's rotated – Yeah. So I'm ro my shoulders are rotated further than my hips. Yeah, your hips are – they always say like your hips are at a 45, shoulders are at a 90. As you add hip hinge, your hips automatically start to unwind. So square back when I'm up. here – yeah, they'll square back up. So as I add hip hinge – and my chest is turned farther than my pelvis is, I'm in, and I'm automatically going into right bend. It just, it happens. Now, I'd say that some of the right bend is actually dynamic, so I'm actually loading, I'm using my, my core to create speed. So some of it is actually I'm, you know, I'm loading myself up, and I'm dropping hard. Yeah. And I'm, I'm using my, my mass to hit that ball. How does this relate to... Um... How does this relate to the thing that we heard a lot about in like 2019, as far as uh, a lot of coaches were saying, leave the hands up, leave the hands up. What does that mean? And, and does it, how does that relate to this? Especially like you wouldn't think like, if I want the hands to go fast, why am I leaving them up? Because most, what we coaches tend to see with players is that they swing back and their first move is to start the hands down. Oh, okay. So if you start your hands first, like most amateurs do, that would be like an amateur move. That would be a good reason for you to feel like your hands are staying up so that you can now turn into your arms and get them to sling out. That, that's the reason. Okay. And do you find that like when people try to like, when you tell people like, all right, leave the hands up, leave the hands up, the hands then steepen and get over or how do you keep them like? Almost never. Um, oh, really? No, almost never. So generally when I, when I'm getting people's arms to, to still be working up and slow down in transition, you almost never see them go this way with it. 
okay. because well, we're, remember, we're, we're always teaching everybody to, to add hip flexion and right bend, okay. which you can see that lowers everything down right where I want it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so the key with leaving the hands up is leave the hands up and add flexion and get, kind of get the body down and the butt back. You gotta, yeah, got to get the body down and the butt back so then you can use your legs to come up at, back out of it later. Yeah. Um, somebody's asking if you have a swing coach, Milo. Do you? Nope. Have you hey. ever have you ever taken a lesson? Um, a few, but from college coaches, but mostly, I've been my own coach, mm -hmm. and my own researcher, and but I've been around lots and lots of good coaches. You know, I I worked at Red Ledges up in Utah, and we had a Jim McLean school, so I worked with Jim. Um, then Mike Malaska and, you know, lots of, lots of good coaches. And so I've formulated my ideas from things I liked about what they did and, and things I thought that weren't right. quite on the money. And you think the reason you got good so fast was one, you're like, you're like a very athletic person, like any kind of sport you pick up very real quick, but two, it's because of how your dad made you grip the club and then your history with baseball. Yeah, I, I learned to, I learned to use my my baseball swing to play golf with, mm -hmm. and so I didn't ever I've really never changed it all that much, other than for a, a year or two I somebody talked me into a different grip and that really screwed me up because my patterns were all designed for what I do. So the grip you have now is kind of the grip you started with originally. It's close. I don't know if I've ever found my way back to the exact same grip, but pretty close. Uh, do you have pictures of of your grip or golf swing back then from then? I have one video, actually about two videos from the first year I learned how to play. Oh, I'd like to and see that. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's on my Instagram somewhere years back. Oh, okay. Yeah. I found it in a, I found it in a box of old VHS videos. You know, I, I learned how to play before there was cell phone video and stuff like that. So. Right, right. Uh, okay, a, a lot of good questions here. Okay, guys, so get in your, your final questions. We have uh, about five to ten more minutes with Milo, and then we'll um, we'll let him go. But this has been really great, Milo. I think that's that's uh, that's really good. What do you think about um, as far as uh, okay, a totally different uh, question because this is I'm going to see Dr. Scott, our friend, next week. And yeah, cool. Dr. Scott is going to, uh, Dr. Scott Lynn, he's a, uh, like one of the foremost, uh, experts in ground forces in the golf swing in the world. And, uh, he's worked recently with Colin Morikawa and I've been playing golf a lot with my friend, Mike, who takes it back very slow. And, uh, everybody, uh, everybody I've been talking to recently is talking about the benefits of a dynamic and fast backswing and how, a fast backswing leads to greater breaking forces, which leads to a faster downswing. So it's like, you know, really trying to rip it back fast. But when you do that, you um, can get kind of like lose control and sloppy, which is a problem of mine. So I'm, what I want to ask you about is how can we like, because I'm seeing some benefit to taking it back slower, but it is like making me like a club and a quarter shorter. Um, yeah, so. so it's like, so how do you, how do you de develop a player's speed of backswing and like kind of how cautious and careful to be on the way back? It's hard. I let their natural rhythms kind of dictate. Some people are naturally kind of slow and other people are kind of quick paced. And so their, their natural rhythms are going to dictate a lot of that. Um, but a lot of being able to take the club back with a little more more speed it requires you to you're going to have your your pressure shift pretty early to your trail foot and then back away from it pretty early that's the, that's what allows you to put yeah. a lot of energy into it see i i enjoy that feeling like i like that feeling but then i feel like um like you, i get very get, wild and sloppy you know yeah you so, get you get soupy up top right. so then the thing it just kind of gets out of control on you right so you need for you 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 could probably energize it with a lot of speed early and then feel like you're coasting from about waist high up and gathering yourself. So you don't get in a hurry to change direction. Mm -hmm. So you can feel like you, you energize, coast, 
and then yeah. send it. If you keep that energy all the way up to like ear high with your hands, <laughs> you just don't have enough time to stop it put without the, you, you, making it go wild. Now you're talking long drive type motions and, you know. So you're just so you're just coasting from like pocket high all the way to the top. That's kind of what I feel, you know, it's Oh really? I don't feel like I'm continuing to force it to go faster. I feel like I put energy in and then I just cruise yeah, and I ride good. that. That's good. All right, cool. Uh, cool guys. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, so, some, uh, one cool question here is, okay. So think about two players, Milo, uh, Joaquin Neiman and Ben Hogan. And so Joaquin Neiman, like it impacted, like that would be like one of the biggest examples of a bender, you know? So yeah, he's, Joaquin Neiman, uh, Lee Trevino, those would be kind of similar guys. But then like Hogan through impact had, had shoulders that were much flatter and kind of on the horizon a lot more like this rather than that. Yeah. Um, well, why do you think it, they Hogan did that? And what are some of the, the advantages and disadvantages of that? anatomy you know hogan probably had fairly long arms um i don't know i don't know we all move slightly different hogan's move was sweet but he was definitely a good bender and a really good mover yeah yeah for sure okay guys that's it uh thank you so much milo for joining us we we did really well tonight i think we had um i think like 130 people watching at one point and oh, still have over 100 so that was that was a lot of fun. If you guys are interested in more, or you have more detailed questions, go to MiloLinesGolf.com and look at uh, his membership. And Milo just put up a big video about this. And then also check out that bending one. But the main thing I think with would be that if you're the type of like the thing, the main thing I would say is that if you're worried about this debate, is that Don't just worry look about at your, look, well, just look at your own <laughs> golf swing and just see if you're gaining flexion. Like, don't even yeah. worry about bending. Just see if you're gaining flexion in your uh, transition. And if you're not, then do that first. And, like, you really don't have to worry about how the body bends. If, if you're swinging athletically and you're gaining flexion, you, you're really You're on, probably going to be bending. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That was awesome. Um, yeah. And there's some, uh, some other good points. So thank you so much to everybody that, that logged on. Like I said, be sure to click the subscribe button. Also, in the description to this video is Milo's channel. Uh, subscribe to Milo's channel, Milo Lines Golf, here on YouTube. But uh, click subscribe on this video because and the little bell, or else you'll never know when I go live and do things like this. I told Milo I was going to do this about um, an hour and five minutes before we actually did it. So uh, you got you got to be you got to be really somebody who has hit the bell to to get in on this. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Hold on, Milo. Okay, we are...